Hello everyone and welcome to Total War Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires. As was voted on in the Legion Men campaign thread, we are going to be playing as the Dwarves. You know, short beardy gets that we've all come to know and love, or know and love, or know and hate, depending on your point of view. I personally rather like them as a faction. So we've got four choices. Thorgrim Grudgebearer, who has the rather nice effect of minus 10% cost for military recruitment buildings faction-wide, minus 10% upkeep for Longbeards and Hammerers, and his R leadership effect is plus five. Not bad at all. Ungram, he's very Slayer-focused. He's got great starting units. He gets Longbeards and Thunderers, and that is ridiculous. Slayers are complete garbage, by the way. Don't really, really don't bother. Seriously, just don't bother. They'll just get shredded even though they have a 30% shielded. They're just, they're just bad. I've never found a good way to use Slayers. So he is not going to be used. And Thorgrim has not gotten his update for Mortal Empires that he did in the base game that gives him grudges against certain factions and some research speed buffs for his personal tree. So I'm not going to be using him, which leaves the choice between two. Belagar Iron Hammer. Now, he starts with 50% more upkeep until Karak 8 Peak is recaptured, and that hurts. The heroes are lovely, though. The leadership is good. The building chain is amazing. Vanguard during underway battles is kind of buggy. Evasion chance is bleh. Siege attacker is actually really helpful because it means them, even if you don't have artillery in your army, you should have artillery in every dwarf army. That, well. <laughs> You still hold! You can punch through things. However, the reason he's good is because once you get Karak 8 Peaks, your faction gets a bunch of buffs that don't come to the other factions. Like if you play as Grum Brindley, you recapture Karak 8 Peaks, doesn't get anything special. I am now Grum Brindle! Grum Brindle's thing looks initially not very impressive. Plus 40% invasion chance using the underway, all characters. True king of Which by the way completely beats Belgar's only personal buff by 10%. You know who I am. Plus 30% reinforcement range for Grumbrindle's army. Can call upon the power of the ancestor gods. This is why he is good, because from the very start you can get a 20% research bonus. And some additional income from whatever, for whatever province Grom Brindle is in. There's also a few other things, but I rarely use them because more science and more money. Come on, what am I gonna? What do you think I'm gonna do with that? Complain? So it's basically a toss-up between these two, and it took me a while to decide. But I'm going with Grom Brindle. Well, maybe. Actually, you know what? Let's start off on the harder you start. My hammer. That way we actually have a bit of a challenge. Because dwarves have very powerful units. Dwar seriously, dwarven infantry are amazingly durable. It's going to be very interesting to see how they fare against lizard men, high elves, and dark elves, though. Skaven are going to just melt because I have very good archers and my blade units will not break. But... Dark Shards are going to hurt. High Elf Archers outrange my Archers by a significant margin. Well, my Quarrelers, that's what they're called. Or my Rangers, if I'm using the remote, I guess. And the lizard men just have a ton of armor piercing damage on their basic units and monstrous creatures, which which the dwarves are not too well equipped to actually deal with. And slayers are only anti-large and melee. And slayers are not that good. They are very fragile, even if they are unbreakable. The ancestor heroes, though, are really good. And now that we can get heroes to level 40. Upkeep really hurts. Ah, sod it. I can get Grum Brindle when I get a great Slayer Shrine at Karak Kadren, because I know I'm going to take Karak Kadren. 
All right, let's go with Belagar. Let's begin, ladies and gentlemen. Belagar Ironhammer is a king in exile. Thrice before, he has attempted to retake Karak Eight Peaks, but has been thwarted. The last expedition failing due to the machinations of a particularly cunning Night Goblin Warlord. But now, after decades of preparation, he is ready to try once more. A call to clan is sent, and the throngs of Clan Anger and Gathereth the loyal hold of Karak Izor, ready for battle. Now, Clan Angron's economy is very fragile in the beginning until you take Karak Eight Peaks. You can generally support maybe two stacks. Which one of the issues with trying to take Karak Eight Peaks is there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of hostiles there. And it's not just goblins who are trash. Like, the only spear infantry in the game, as far as I'm aware, that doesn't actually have an anti large unless they've changed that with Mortal Empires. That is how trash they are. Goblins are awful. No, they have orcs and the like, and those are actually somewhat dangerous. And by somewhat dangerous, I mean very dangerous and quite threatening indeed. <sighs> by the way, this starting screen is the same for all characters. That's Thorgrim Grudgebearer up there. So, this isn't anything unique. A pity that. Or the faction capital buff. The, buff, the buffs to uh, main settlement should help a lot for the dwarves. It's one of the issues that I always had was finding a place to put in the thing that lets you get iron breakers and hammers. The Hall of Oaths, I believe, was the name. Honestly, I haven't played the dwarves since Total War Warhammer 2 came out. So, I'm gonna be a little rusty. Especially as there's been building changes and, you know, I can't actually tell what those are until I get into this. I'm kind of hoping that brewery buildings will reduce ranger upkeep, though, because rangers... Rangers are actually pretty good. They're just exactly as shooty as their quarreler brethren, but they're just... but they're not as tanky. Really, they're a very interesting unit to use as your archers as dwarves, because dwarves are generally plop your ass down in one place, Use your artillery and archers to force them to come to you or get shot to pieces. Alright. Now we're actually hearing sounds! Plan see the four Angron heroes. is adrift, my lord Belagar, yet hope remains. The dwarf lords of Karak Izor have sponsored your quest to retake your ancestral home. A chance yet lingers. The journey will be long and perilous. There is much ground between here and your throne, and enemies are everywhere. To the north, the treacherous and duplicitous Skarsnik, self-proclaimed warlord of Karak Eight Peaks, moves to usurp your birthright once more. Time is of the essence. Yet in the east, the Badlands teem with more greenskins, and even the border princes may wish to exploit your plight. You must not relent. Your rage and determination, the fortress of Karak Eight Peaks shall be returned to dwarf rule once again, with you, Belagar Ironhammer, as its rightful king. All right. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Ah, the Angren clan is beset by tribulation. Far from the rightful home, with little of their former power intact, its Dawi nevertheless, nevertheless cling to hope. Angren's strength endures in King Belagar, aided by the spirits of his restless, vengeful ancestors, and supported by allied clans, you'll see the dwarf's glory restored. Alright, first up, let's look at Karak Izor. Let's see if there have any, been any real changes to the dwarves. The granary is completely unchanged. The Toolmakers Guild Hall is unchanged. But their public order building now gets you dwarf beer production. Also, previously, you acquired a province with the beer resource to recruit Bugman's Rangers, which are flat out better versions of normal Rangers. 
Now you can just recruit Bugman's Rangers from any province with a tier with, that has the space for a tier three as it gets is that is what enables it. This has not been changed as far as I am aware. Now, normal dwarves only get the ranger barracks, but Clan Angren gets the ranger outpost. Also, the campaign movement range, I believe, is another new thing for from Mortal Empires. This has... This doesn't... Actually, no, this does do something new. It gives you one Master Engineer, which isn't too good a hero on the defense, but it's still pretty good. It doesn't exactly hurt to have more troops, after all. I've yet to find a way for it to hurt, at least. <laughs> uh, also, the fact that you can now get Thanes in your settlements is amazing, because one of the big issues with playing as a Dwarves was, well, Thanes. So, we're going to be getting the clan barracks as soon as physically possible, because quarrelers are going to help a lot. The throng is mustard. Now, these guys are ethereal, which results in various things, but the main one is this. 75% physical resist and unbreakable. And all of them have their own unique traits for clan anger and ancestor as well. All of them are unbreakable, cannot be targeted by enemy acts and success, and have no upkeep. Hulk and Half Stonebeard has plus 10 bonus versus large, and he is a Thane engaging in melee combat. Funny Ironbrow is a runesmith who already starts with some runes, which is very helpful. He also starts with a student, which is also really helpful. He has plus 20 leadership RSIs when attacking. Which is pretty useful for, for boosting already ridiculous, and I do mean ridiculous, levels of leadership dwarves have. Dremar Hammerfist, again, already starts with one point in all of these, and that's always pretty good, because... Well, actually, the Dead Eye is not very good, because it boosts the, the engineer's range themselves. You want triangulation, requisition, so you're infantry so your archers and artillery can shoot more. His trait is my, plus five leadership in your local region. Again, very good. King Lon Ironhammer, he does have Devastating Charge, which isn't actually very good for the dwarves, even though it can go up to plus 30, because dwarves just don't do charging. They do sit there and go either break through our wall of flesh and steel or die. Also, he has plus 20% weapon strength as his unique function for clan anger and ancestor trait. Now, I don't think the training from the two Thanes stacks, but Belagar's little adventuring party here is very efficient. Regiments of Naram do exist for the for the dwarves. Let's look at Belagar himself. Unfortunately, instead of Grimnir's heirs, he gets Reclamation, which is really not very good. It's charge bonus for your army, and your army does not want charge bonus because you are dwarves. Apologies for that. But yes, he gets Reclamation instead of Grimnir's Errors, which makes him not the best, honestly, because Grimnir's Errors buffs your Iron Breakers, and you want to use Iron Breakers. They don't have the immune to psychology that Longbeards do, but or the Inspire Encourage rule that Longbeards do, but... Yeah. Also... Captain Lakuman does not actually work on Quarrelers, so I don't actually want Quarrelers with Belagar. But I'm going to get them anyway because it's going to take a lot longer to get ra to get Quarrelers than it is to get Rangers. Now you may notice my kind of small unit sizes. This is because I'm with the Dwarves.
Dwarves oh don't have God. huge hordes, they just have very high quality units. Now you can go and take out Vicious Gob Spit, but I recommend striking at Karak Buffdar first instead. Because if they get to max, they can get a very annoying camp. And you see underway to get here quickly. So actually, it might be a good idea to move here. And then I need to. Then I should might want to recruit some troops. Yes, it has 50% more upkeep. Very but well. I will do as you ask. getting yourself a strong front line of dwarves is very important. I'm going to keep the miners for now. But overall, I'll note this: miners are not very good ideas to keep around. Now, first thing you want to do is the dwarves. First thing before anything else. Heavy quarn stones. Your growth is awful as the dwarves. They do not grow. I guess they just can't tell what's under the beard. So. In addition, right now I have nobody I can possibly trade with. Who calls? You know, I can trade with Wissenland. Welcome, ancient allies. In Let's make friends with times, them. Dwarves are a fine sight to behold. I will. Make myself a little extra money. I think they, might, they changed that, because previously I don't think you could get Wissenland straight off. That's very helpful. Yeah, so creating three extra cards of troops, and then moving in on Rend... Do I believe he's supposed to be Rend Blackhand? I believe that's a named character character from the Orcs. But the more important thing is the Trinket Maker, because my income is again taking massive hits, and it's going to take a hit of about 450 next turn. Thankfully, the target should pass quickly as it is the beginning of the game. But there are a lot more factions, and I haven't actually experienced Mortal Empires personally. This is my first personal go at Mortal Empires overall. So. You generally want to secure your first region, this province, before you do anything else. After that, I tend to go and try and wipe out Skarsnik, because Skarsnik uses a lot of goblins, but that's not actually... But that's because the AI is programmed to use a lot of goblins for him, because that's in character for Skarsnik. Goblins don't do so well under AI control against dwarves. Also, Vicious Gobspit will generally move out of your territory and go to the Border Princes, but sometimes he won't, so be wary if he decides to go... Oh, these stunties look like an easy meal! I'll kill them all! Ah, uh, the High Elves. I have plans for the High Elves in Mortal Empires. Those of you who know your Warhammer history, you'll know why I, I as a dwarf, have plans for the High Elves. But the reward. But this is why. I like Clan Angrund. This is what you get. Plus 5 Lord Recruit Rank and plus 10 against Greenskin Tribes isn't too useful. But plus 4 Public Order, all provinces, and the unit experience gain per turn make them very, very strong. Arguably the strongest faction of the Dwarves. Leaving. I'm going to move here, because then next turn I'll be able to move in one turn to Karak Buffdar, and I can't get to Karak Buffdar this turn without a march. So, therefore, troops. It shall be done. Two warriors this time, so I still have a positive income. But there's nothing really else to do at this stage of the game. Turns are going to be very short, and we're going to be going through them quite quickly. Please note, this grudge can get very bad, very fast. Rumbling is not fun early on. Leadership minus four isn't too bad given dwarves high leadership, but the public order really hurts. All right. Let's end the turn. Next time, we're going to get to the first fight as the dwarves at Karak Buffdar. We'll be playing it.
Because, well, it'll be the first fight as the dwarves in the first fight of the campaign. I'm not sure it'd be a sin not to play it, but it'd sure as hell be a kind of a dick move. Come on, hurry up. Loads and loads of factions, and they're and you're going to see that number drop precipitously later in the game. Wanted to bet there's a, that at least 25% of these are going to be gone by turn 50. Probably more like 30 or 40% of these. Depends on how it goes. You have a clan barracks! Which means I can get quarrelers. I don't really want quarrelers, but it's good to know that I can get them. Yes. As long as you should remember about the dwarves, all of their units are charged defense versus large, for their melee troops at least. This can result in some very Ready. annoying strategies from the point of view of cavalry. Because you don't care that you just got charged by a bunch of horses, you're dwarves! Alright, let's fight Karak Buffdar! They've got a lot of orc boys! Some goblin wolf riders, two units of goblin archers, and two units of goblin spearmen. As I said, they are so terrible they don't, that despite being spears, they don't get bonus versus large. They also have the expendable rule, which is new for mortal empires. That's going to be kind of annoying, because it means that killing all the goblins isn't going to annoy the orcs at all, which does make sense from the fluff. Orcs and goblins do not get along there, but it's going to be annoying nonetheless. Belagar's adventuring party is likely what's going to tip the scales in my favor. They all cause fear and terror, which I probably should have mentioned. And they're all pretty dangerous in a brawl, especially as Ren does not have magic attacks, and thus he'll be they'll he'll take a 75% damage penalty against these guys. Not fun! So let's begin. We don't have many archers, but we have a lot of melee units. Let's see what this map looks like, shall we? Aw oh man, they're not giving the cool little info blurbs. Does anyone know if there's a setting that changes that that thing at the bottom from basic tutorial crap to interesting info blurbs? I'd rather prefer having interesting info blurbs over the basic tutorial crap. Also, he's getting reinforcements, so technically, if I was playing an aggressive army, I could push in and crack him open. But I'm playing the dwarves. Dwarves don't do aggressive. Dwarves really do not do aggressive. Come on, hurry up. Five cards of orcs isn't going to be too bad, though. Three cards of Wolf Riders. Mm. Might not want to vanguard my two cards of Rangers. It depends on if I can shoot up the Wolf Riders. So they don't, because while they do have shields, they're not very good shields, and they have very little armor along, and health alongside that. It's going to be an interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Mortal Empires did introduce faction-wide unit changes, after all. Wolf Warriors! War of Vengeance! Ready! Vengeance! Alright, start on the high ground! You guys, Vanguard! No here. You here! You up here, and you down here. Miners aren't too good in a fight, but they can at least... They're actually decent on the charge. However, as you can see, in a straight-up fight, they just lose to Dwarf Warriors. They do, however, have the trait good against Gate, which is very rare. So remember that. So 
start the battle and see how this goes. See if I can get off another salvo, and then I'm going to retreat them behind my lines. Only five orcs dead, but a lot of orcs wounded, because I took out, you know, 2,200 of their health. Normally I'd be responding to this by smacking them with RT, but... Yeah. Well, isn't this going to be interesting? Dead goblin. Bang! Dead goblin. Enemy archers will really yes, screw your yes. day as dwarves. Come together, lads. Ah. Thonry, if I get you in range, I want to pop the Ring of Oath and Steel right about now. Then I want to throw you the thread because you're actually decent in a brawl. Master Engineer, I probably want you to just shoot stuff. Actually, no. You guys need to back up again. You get into that. You get into that. You get into that. You, are, I guess, just roll around the flank. General Dwarves play by just out grinding their opponents. As you can see, I've lost 35, and they're starting to really take some heavy losses as well. this on the ranger so they deal a lot more damage. Looks like this car of goblin archers is running away. That's good. I want to focus on the other one. Get on red and black hand and if you can't you know, pop the ranger car in. That will help. Hulk and Hulk, get over there. Start breaking those wolf riders. Victory is, in, is indeed in our grasp. Dwarven warriors are once again out grinding absolutely everything else in a brawl, as they usually do. Your shooting is obstructed, which kind of sucks. I guess you can fire off a few pot shots of that unit of goblin wolf riders. You yeah, have, however, killed 19 orcs. The main reason you have to keep these guys around is because they make you move farther. And dwarves need some very silly level of movement for all I do. Pop this again. Shoot the rally unit of goblin archers. Normally you're going to be able to break archers a lot faster than this, but... I only have two cards in my own archer, so usually I tend to roll around six. You can 
see the airship. Get into the flank! Kill them! Dwarf warriors! For the High King! Get into those goblins! Goblins do not like fighting! No. And as you can see, one of the big issues with playing as the dwarves is your archers running out of ammunition. Look at how my, my rangers are doing right now. Shoot anyone who rallies! Shoot anyone who rallies! Shoot anyone who rallies! War of vengeance! Show us the enemy! Okay, shoot the archers. Fine. Battle ready! Run away, miners. You will get wrecked by Ren Blackhand. You shoot Ren Blackhand! You're out of ammo! I could use you as a flank force in an emergency, but that's about it. I'm gonna pull my hammers down, because hammers are very killy. They're the offen one of the big offensive units of the Dawi. You're out of ammo too. This is problematic. This is very problematic indeed. Move these guys down, and I'm going to try in a flanking maneuver with the hammers as they are very, very killy. They are also very, very tired, but you get used to that after a while. It's the dwarves. Your troops are always going to be tired. Always, always tired. Plow into that unit of orc boys. You, I want to get down here and try and kill these orc boys. Give that unit of miners physical resist. Meanwhile, keep shooting that bloody orc. You deal a fair bit of missile damage, so you should be able to at least put big holes in them. If you're not going to shoot, I'll put you over here so you can at least shoot some orcs somehow. As you can see, there's nothing quite like good Dowie steel for breaking orcs. Where are my hammers? They're right in the thick of things, and they are killing everything. And we see a shatter roll throughout the fight. You see why I don't like miners too much? If these were warriors, they would have been much more efficient. Master Engineer! Yeah, Master Engineers are not very good in an actual fight. They are generally pretty vicious in the campaign map. That is where you like Master Engineers. Decisive victory. Yeah, I'd say that was a pretty decisive victory, all things told. Yeah, mostly wiped out their cavalry. If I had had a larger set of archers, and more importantly, a larger set of... <sighs> artillery, I could have done much better there. As is, I... Think, I like to think I did well. As you can see, most of your troops will survive as the Dawi because you always have very high armor. You have Temple Guard levels of armor on Hammerers. And Iron Breakers have the highest level of armor in the game. Like, seriously, get Iron Breakers and you have the highest armor in the game. I'm not sure there's actually a way to exceed Iron Breaker levels of armor even with Chaos Chosen. Now, granted, Chaos Chosen get close to Iron Breakers, but they cannot exceed them, as far as I'm aware. As you can see, we won. We don't get the ridiculous loot of the Lizardmen, but we do get quite a bit. We want to occupy and not loot and occupy it. Because otherwise, 
things happen. Mostly bad things. Ah! Well, this does isn't... Okay, so the tier fours... They make it so the unit experience goes up the... But the upkeep down does not go up. However, my recruitment cost at this stage of the game is amazing. It already generates me money, and I am already Lord trading. First up, for anything else is playing, is any Lord Route Marcher. It's not a question. It's just a statement. Just ban you. And recruit one card of Quarrelers. It's better to have Rangers as Belagar due to tactical Akumen, but... Very well. I need anyone who can you even shoot a crossbow right now, really. Next turn, I'll get quite a bit more income. 100 and 100 more. So that's 200 more gold pieces. And then I'll start moving down onto Zarak Zil. Also, you can start seeing my dwarves have terrible growth. Look at that. 12. I'm getting 7 from this and 5 from this. This is going to be 10 turns before I can grow Karak Buffdar 1 point. You see why dwar I said that dwarves are awful at growing. Now we might be able to do some more trade with what? Tilea. Problem is Tilea is do passive, so it's hard to get them to do we anything foes. whatsoever. Yet. Seriously, they don't do anything. So I'm probably going to recruit that one card of Quarrelers, and then I'm going to start moving south and try and take Zarak Zil. So I need to note, Zarak Zil is, a sav is, I believe, a savage orc place with a broken nose, but yeah. After that, I'm going to want to try and swing up north and take out Skarsnik as quickly as possible before he can build up. Maybe take his town too, because I need as much income as I can grab. I think Mortal Empires is probably going to make a play as Clan Angren a lot easier. Because on your march to the east, the beast normally there's issues with, well, replenishing your troops as you punch through the orcs. Unless you manage to confederate Karak Hearn. But Yeah. Now you want to make friends with Karak Norn. These guys with Grimhold. As Clan Angren. The reason you want to do this is simple. They are the first ones to get smacked by Skarsnik. So if you're at War Skarsnik and they're at War with Skarsnik, they're going to like you a lot more. What else, however, I don't seem to have gotten there. Ah, income from settlements up. That is going to help quite a bit. Because dwarf settlements do make a decent supply of coin. Ready. Revenge incarnate. Dwarves also don't replenish very fast, but. Eh. As you can see, Zarak Zil is not going to be much of a problem. Now, the big problem right now is this. Look at that. Look at that. They have already leveled tomorrow. Another quarreler gets me four archers and a solid line of. Seven warriors. Unfortunately, I can't do anything more until I start growing or I take Zarak Zil. What I can do, however, is make friends with these guys. Non aggression pact? Military access, please. I can only trade with Talea, and Talea doesn't really care for me. The 
they don't dislike me, but they don't care for me either. I'm just a dwarf. Now, I'll note something that the Toolmaker's techs are very good, because Toolmakers are going to be a lot of your income. Like, Toolmakers are going to be a lot of your income. So keep that in mind. But... Not for now. Ah, that's new! Previously, what Rat Poison did was just the untainted plus one faction wide and the income up. Attribute causes fear when fighting against Skaven in all characters is in character and very, very nice. It is really good. Like, wow. That is actually really good. Like, impressively good. Especially as you want seal stones and Vallea's protection, because your anti-corruption measures actually aren't all that good as the dwarves. Iron Hammer. Now granted, this does change somewhat with the addition of two extra slots to a capital, because now you can actually afford to slot that in. Let's see if there are any new traits. Grugni, that's pretty simple. Aggressive is good. Grimnir is very good on pretty much anything. Can't recruit any heroes. Let's end the turn. We're not making too much More money, but we're Clan Angrind. Our expenses are ridiculous. <sighs> we're going to be going into this fight a little bit damaged, but I think that's okay, because all they can recruit are goblins and orc boys, neither of which are too dangerous. The boys, I will note, are much more dangerous than the goblins. The goblins basically exist to be arrow fodder. Unless you're playing a scar stick, I believe they all get poison attacks then, but even so, you generally want to go for night goblins over actual goblins. Because night goblins have sneaky nets. So they get much closer to their opponent before, you know, getting shot dead. I think they also get Vanguard with him, goblins do, which is actually pretty helpful. It means you can pull off a swarm attack sort of thing. Bah. Alright, keep going through all of this. Hello, Empire. Hello, my fellow dwarves. All my fellow dwarves, including Crackadrack. Hello, Chivalry Nutbars. Hello, Wood Elves. Hello, miscellaneous human factions. Hello, orcs. Savage and normal. There are quite a few of orcs, as you can see, which is quite in character for the setting. Hello, beastmen, who go quickly at least. Hello, undead. Hello, high elves. Hello, lizard men, who go quickly it seems. Hello, dark elves. You have quite a bit of factions. Hello, Skaven. Hello, random ass Norskin tribes. We still haven't had the DLC applied to them because according to the devs, apparently they cludged it a bit with the DLC for Total War Warhammer 1, so putting in Total War Warhammer 2 is actually kind of annoying for them. We need 50% movement. Whoa, whoa. Onwards. Sometimes the right mass but on this thing isn't quite nice, so I'm going to encamp here for a little extra replenishment on those quarrelers. By little, I mean they're fully replenished. That's nice. Eight more might not sound like a lot, and it isn't a lot really, but it will help a bit. What earth is... Greetings, stranger. Why do they have an aversion to me? That's actually kind of weird. Yes. Greetings. We may not be the end. All right. Let's sort by race. Let's talk Ready. to Karak Hearn. I already have treaties that with you. That way, from another hold arrive. I want to get Karak Norn though. If I can get Karak Norn, 
to like me enough that they'll confederate. And what can the Dowie do for Ooh, you? I can get a defensive alliance. What you? Will they accept it? No. They're still going up a lot because I've been beating the shit out of a bunch of orcs. Dwarves do not like orcs. Dwarves really, really do not like orcs. You've been recruiting orc boys. That's going to make you a little harder to break open, but not too yes. much. They're still going to charge me like a bunch of lunatics, and then I'm going to shoot you to pieces because I have two more archer units. By the way, they really are exactly as shooty as one another. Rangers, do you have less ammunition and less armor? They also have Stalk and Vanguard Deployment. The Vanguard Deployment is what let me get off those few extra shots. And as these guys can't get Wolf Cavalry, I can afford to keep my Rangers out there a lot longer, as my Rangers are faster than their baseline infantry units. I can basically play Harassment. Very, very scary Harassment. Alright, go through the High Elves, the Dark Elves, Skaven, the Eumies, more of the Eumies. I just seem to go major factions and then minor factions. Yeah. In the end, they'll compress. This orc fight, by the way, I'm probably not going to play unless it says I'm going to get my ass kicked, because you just saw an orc fight. This orc fight isn't going to be much different. It's going to be infantry charger lines. Set up a line of dwarves. Have your rangers soften them up a bit. Well, that's about it. There's very King little King. complexity in early game dwarven play. To battle. Ah, I can get the Banner of Eternal Flame. Let's put that on Belagar so everyone in the front line is flaming weapons. Marauder Resolve Unit is goodbye, and they ripped up my main infantry line. That's what happens when you auto resolve. It's not quite as good at understanding how the whole line as the player is. And now you can recruit the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass, who are actually really good because they have anti infantry. Now, I don't actually want this here, so I'm going to demolish it. True King of Apes. I mostly got it for earlier quarrelers. Now, I want to get Mighty O Stone, because that gets everyone plus 27 melee defense in range. That's pretty useful. In fact, drop the pretty. That is extremely useful. This thing, I will get Foe Seeker. Because you want to use... His troops is essentially brawlers. Also, Runesmiths always, always, always maximize strike the runes. Rune of Wrath and Runin may look pretty, and it does lead to Rune of Negation, which is really, really strong. But, in the end, being able to just use your basic abilities a lot is really good. Now, you also want Ballistics Calibration, because what that does is make your troops shoot more accurately for a short time. And makes them shoot more. More and more accurate shots are very, very useful. I'm not going to recruit any more troops just yet, because I'm going to need to build up more. But I can get a Commandment rolling. Right now, what I need is empower the guilds. Growth plus 15. I'm getting 17 growth right now. I would double my growth with with empower the guilds running. At this stage of the game, that is actually a big change. Like, that is a big change. Most of what I'm surviving on is my 2,500 background income, a king's purse that everyone has, as it were. 
I am Wounded. actually thinking about... No, they cost 275... 245 a turn. Not worth it. Even if they do have anti-infantry. Which is very helpful, I'll note. Hmm. They appear to move it around a bit. The Slayers are gotten earlier. Your Gremlins Iron Breakers, by the way, are really good. Ah, they did give them... Give them the firewall moving. That's very good. Very, very good indeed. Okay. Not much else to do now, so... Revenge in so I can't even move, and I should probably wait here long enough to at least fully replenish. So I could underway march up here and try and get Skarsnick quickly. Hmm. Worth considering. <laughs> Worth considering. In the turn! Nothing of interest to us is going to happen. Yeah, it seems to be major factions like Dwarves, the Empire, Greenskins, Vampire Counts. Those factions seem to go first in the turn order, and then it's all the many, 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 many minor factions. Oh god. Actually, these guys seem to be being raised. If it weren't for Skaven Blight's garrison, I might try and take these. As is, Skaven Blight's going to be a thorn in my side for a very, very long time. Especially as it is a one settlement province. It may be a faction capital one, which does somewhat make up for the whole one settlement province issue, but. So I should look at the, the little castle thing next to it that's, that tells you what factions can take advantage of its strategicness. It might be something like, DESTROYED SCAFEN BLIGHT! That you get for it. That gets goes, AHA! The dwarves have beaten up the filthy rat men! Blah blah blah! Plus five leadership versus Skaven faction wide or something. Because Skaven attacking my rear lines are going is going to be a pain in the ass. Oh my god. At least it gets somewhat cancelled out by the commandment, but ew. Ew. Ew, 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 ew. Our ancestors would be proud. Billy Fine, God, force march up here, you And I think rangers are cheaper, so I'm gonna but no, I shouldn't put Ranger Outpost here. It would not be efficient with my work. I don't need... I don't need any of the buffs from this. I can hold one just fine myself. I think I have a Siege Workshop here. That will not grudge throwers. And artillery for the dwarves is defiant. very important for their standard tactical methods. And yes, Rangers are slightly cheaper than Quarrelers. And it's... So I should probably swap those out. Next turn, though, I'll have more money from my tool makers by 5%, which gets me 300... 50 more gold pieces. It's not, 50 more gold pieces isn't too bad. I'm losing one provincial stability a turn, but... Eh. Why is this here? This is a big empty space. That's unusual. Well, whatever. Grimhold, you have some time to wait for more. Give me a thought over. Will you take a defensive alliance? Yeah, no, you will not. <laughs> Karakurn, you Let's won't consider you it because I haven't we'll really kicked any of the asses. Gold. You distrust dwarves. Why do you distrust dwarves? Are that, is that just to make them hard to confederate for the main dwarf faction? Because I can see that. It's kind of annoying, but I can see it. Do they still have the right-click thing? And one, you get some mildly interesting building descriptions from them. Seems to cancel that into a pity. I guess it was to save space. Whatever, let us in the turn. We're going through these at blazing speed compared to the Lizard Men campaign. Because guess what? 
We can actually, you know, get through the turns quickly because we're not a gigantic leviathan. This will change. We take Karagate Peaks back first before we can really become a true leviathan as that 50% upkeep cost increase is painful. It is very, very, very painful. I do want to see what's going on up here, so if I can see what's going on up here, I might see that, say, Skarsnick is embroiled in a fight with Grimhold. If Skarsnick is embroiled in a fight with Grimhold's main capital over here, and I come in the back, I can wipe out Skarsnick before he really has a chance to build up. And that is incredibly valuable, because Skarsnick has an Arachnorok, and Arachnoroks are very scary. Monstrous creatures in general to the dwarves are very scary. Which makes the Lizardmen a very good faction to counter them. They have the durability to go through the archer range without two bad losses, and they have the armor piercing damage on the infantry and the monstrous creatures to punch through dwarven very heavy infantry lines. True king of eight feet. That's not too relevant right now. What is relevant is that Grimhold is slowly but steadily uh, like me more because I've beaten the shit we'll out of a lot of orcs. Don't dawned. take a military alliance. Hello! Right. Hello, Karak Norn! You have quite the army there. The I'd really the love to have that army on my side when I'm going up to fight Skarsnicks. An extra 11 cards with an artillery unit and three quarrelers. And an not insignificant level of shootiness. That would be very helpful indeed. Nothing else I can do this turn, though. But the grudge has gotten worse. Over time, grudges get worse. As you can see, there's base severity and age modifier. Karak 8 Peaks Grudge, it can get bad enough that you actually just have it fill up the full thing. Well, that's really scary when it happens. By the way, just something to note, Karak Eisler used to have the brewery function. It was one of the reasons it was a starting province for Belagar, so they did nerf the Clan Anger and start a bit in the Empires, making it a bit harder, and that's never any fun. However, this is how you win. You have to own a lot of different settlements. The short victory is not too bad. You need Karak Eight Peaks, you need to unite the Dwarf Realms. We also need to take a lot of these very important places. Now, granted, you already have two of them. You're going to have two of them if you're anything decent with dwarves, eight peaks, and Karazakarak. But the fact that you have to take a lot of faction capitals hurts a lot. Yeah, you don't really get to do this as Clan Angrand. You just don't. I can't really recruit a Thane either. A mustering hall is the tier three, and that's not really valid. I don't have any grudges. However, I've already researched four technologies. You start with two, and I've researched two. So I'm getting an extra 1,000 on top of this, 2,000. So I'm getting 3,000 gold pieces once I take on another hole. Which is likely to be the one owned by Skarsnick that is up here. Because frack you, Skarsnick, you're an asshole. And what can the Dowie do for you on this one? Ready. Honor to your ancestors. Now they're going to like me a lot more because of my treaties. 114. They're also an underdog, so they're very easy to confederate. Let's end the turn, and after the end of the turn, let's end the episode. 
taking about nine turns to go through an hour. That's counting the loading time at the beginning. You see why it is very easy and aha, Skarsnik has shown himself. Assuming conditions permit it next episode, we may have a great big fight on our hands. Crack Skarsnik open like an egg and win. I'll probably wait for the two turns it takes to get a grudge thrower or so. Because having a grudge thrower is very, very useful as the dwarves. It means the enemy is forced to come to you instead of holding back. Dwarven artillery is not something to be fucked with. Unless your cavalry. Cavalry is actually pretty good at messing it up. But I digress quite a bit. Now, as usual for the first episode in the series... What the shit? Did Whistleland lose a city or something? What the shit? I needed that money! I really needed that money! Shit! This is bad! This is really bad! This is really, really bad! I'm really worried now. Okay, before we end the episode, I'd want to see what the frack happened to Whistleland. If I got confederated by the Empire, that's great, but... The Skull Taker's own file, Dorf, and that's what linked them up to Weissenland for me. Oh, hey then! Just... Okay, just frack you, okay? Frack you. I don't even have... I can't even take on a grudge thrower without going to negative income now. So frack you. Ugh. Next turn, upgrade Karak, buff Dar, get it, a tinker thing, and look at its woodsman's hut to level 2 for an extra 50 income. <sighs> All the things that could have happened, the Skull Tanger taking filed over is the worst. Ugh. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below, or on the threads on space battles and sufficient velocity that will be left in the description below. They won't be here exactly as the video is posted, as I will have to create them when I get up. Creating a thread without a video in the front of it seems rather bad to me but they will be there as soon as I am awake so please leave comments in the YouTube section or in those threads once I get up and for now goodbye and my mortal empires move quicker <laughs>